Senate yep. candidate on the mm -hmm. Dem side. Hey, Miss Caroline, how are you this morning? Good morning. Thank you for joining us, by the way. Okay, first of all, it comes down to you and Foster Campbell on the Democrat side. You got into the race first, and Foster hesitated and hemmed and hawed, and all the while he's saying, I haven't made my final decision, but I've got the governor's endorsement. And, and then he finally got into the race. Do you feel like he stepped on your toes a little bit? Well, you know, first of all, I would say good morning, and I'm happy to be on with y'all. I'm not really sure. It's hard for me to get in the head of any candidate uh, other than, you know, trying to do what I need to do. Um, but I have must say this. I've been very uh, well received by the people of Louisiana. I'm very excited about what we've been able to do in our campaign and certainly being up in Shreveport in the Bossier area. Um, you know, every time I come back up there, it just I'm overwhelmed by all the development and all the potential that the area has. Tell us about, Car we're, we're unfamiliar. A lot of folks in our listening audience are unfamiliar. Tell us about you. Well, I'm from Livingston Parish uh, originally. You know, I was raised in Denham Springs, and as y'all know, I mean, y'all suffered through some flooding events yourselves pretty recently with the Red River. Um, we've been in the middle of trying to rebuild and, and get our lives straight. Um, but I'm, a, you know, a conservative Democrat. I was born and raised in Louisiana. I'm, you know, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, and pro-small businesses. And in fact, I'm sitting here, if you hear some background noise, in uh, New Orleans, I'm about to board a Glow Airlines flight, which, as y'all know, is flying from New Orleans to Shreveport now to twice daily. I'm very proud to be affiliated with GLOW and doing my part to bring good jobs to Louisiana. When you say conservative Democrat, pardon me, but John Bell pitched himself during the gubernatorial race as a conservative Democrat, and it's turned out not to be the case. Um, hence, a lot of folks in this part of the state might be a little, uh, da, 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 a little, they'd be wondering, do you really mean it? Tell me that you really mean it. <laughs> I mean, I I don't really, you know, I think these partisan labels are um, just a, a portion. Of, it's a way to describe people. But who you are starts with where your heart is. And my heart has always been with the people of Louisiana. I was raised, I'm very proud of my family, with strong moral and Christian values. And I want to fight every day to make sure Louisiana gets what she needs out of Washington, D.C. You know, you all have, there's a lot of people in this race, including a lot of people besides Mr. Campbell and Congressman Fleming and others that I'm sure y'all and your listeners are very familiar with. But it, a lot of them have been around a long Long time, and I'm not really sure that they've been delivering uh, what we need to have delivered for us in Louisiana in order to get our economy back working, make sure that our nation is one of laws that is secure, and move forward for the future. Now, you tout yourself again, let me say, as a conservative Democrat, but you can't possibly be conservative enough to out conservative John Kennedy or Congressman Fleming or, or some of the Republicans. So obviously, you think there's something more to getting elected than the conservative label. What are those things? Well, I think people want to talk about kitchen table issues. Okay, we need to make sure that our working families are getting what they need in Louisiana. And particularly, you know, you can talk about um, saying no for no's sake and being obstructionist in Congress. But I don't see how that helps the Bossier area. I don't see how that helps Shreveport grow. I don't see how that protects Fort Polk, you know, important economic drivers in, in the area of north Louisiana. And frankly, the rest of all of Louisiana. We often talk about north and south Louisiana as if they're two entirely different places. But I will say this. I've been to every six, uh, 64 pairs and the people that I meet, they are concerned about the future of their country. And they want to make sure that somebody's up there working hard for them, not for political ego purposes, not to just get a promotion, and not to just keep running and running and running for an office to build your resume or for prestige purposes. I'm not focused on that. You know, I'm an outsider. I'm a private person. I run a business. And I was going to say you have a business background, right? Community. Yes, I do. I, you know, I've, I understand how the markets work. I understand how free markets work. I understand what it took to launch an airline. Uh, you know, I, I mean, dealing with the FAA and burdensome regulations. I mean, we fight that every day, but we're also trying to bring good jobs to people. We believe in the people of Louisiana. I always have. I'm a hard worker, and I want to bring that work ethic back to Washington, D.C. Talking to Caroline Fayard, speaking of jobs, a lot of people will say a lot of our jobs are going to people that are coming across the border illegally. What is is the answer to our illegal immigration problem? Well, look, we have got to have true comprehensive immigration reform, and it's going to require more than just political grandstand. We all know, you know, I mean, everybody knows the Statue of Liberty. We are a nation of immigrants, but we're also a nation of laws, and we need to enforce the laws. Do you send securing, people back? Securing our borders is essential, but we have to come together to enact comprehensive immigration reform that creates legal pathways to citizenship.
let me say this. I have, um, in, you know, I've lived in New Orleans and I've, I've gone through some of the immigration issues in New Orleans. I've had people that have, you know, tried to do some things around my house that weren't here in this country um, legally. And there's documented records of that. And this has happened several years ago. And I remember working through the process and working with law enforcement and working with assistant DA in order to make sure that the laws were enforced. And they were. And that person was sent back was deported. So the laws can work if people enforce them, and that's what we have to focus on first, and then we can go further into comprehensive. Speaking speaking of of New Orleans, you said you're from New Orleans, which is a sanctuary. I live in New Orleans. Sorry, my bad. (laughs) Um, um, A sanctuary city, Orleans Parish, a sanctuary parish. Um, State Attorney General Landry earlier this week saying that that because of that sanctuary status in New Orleans, that that crime rates are soaring. What's your thoughts on sanctuary cities? You know, let me say this. I think New Orleans has really bounced back from Katrina. They have a lot of systemic issues that that everyone is working upon. And I'm proud to have Mayor Landry's endorsement because I do think he represents the future of of governance in Louisiana in terms of new urbanism and bringing development to areas like Shreveport and Bossier Parish and New Orleans and Baton Rouge. Now, when it comes to sanctuary cities, that, as far as I can tell from what I've been able to understand between whatever Attorney uh, General Landry is saying and whatever the policy actually is, criminal laws are still enforced. You know, if you break the law in this country, you're going to go and get prosecuted and you're going to go to jail and you may get deported depending on your status. And that's what we have to focus on is fixing what we can fix first before we reach out larger into it. And I'll tell you also one thing. You know, I think they were using that tragic accident on the highway to try to make this a political football that happened when people were trying to go rebuild Baton Rouge and those areas in the flood. That man was a bad driver. He had been pulled over numerous times, but he lived in Jefferson Parish, not in Orleans. So there's a lot of political grandstanding going on in this election cycle. But I'll tell you, as I travel around the state of Louisiana, people are focused on jobs, the economy, education, and moving our country forward what are you going to do to get to know the folks in northwest louisiana are you going to be traveling up here uh frequently Yes, I've actually been up there several times already. Like I said, you know, I was doing it before on the business development side, working with Glow. But now that I get to campaign, you know, we was just up in Shreveport, um, <laughs> walking around, looking at all the riverfront and all the development that was there about a week ago, uh, visiting with some folks. And, you know, every time I come up to North Louisiana, I'm reminded how much potential there is on the I-49 corridor, how much economic development can, is there and needs to be continued to be followed there and it's going to require work and relationship you know with people in washington dc that can take care of the people in north louisiana that are a big economic engine for us